Welcome to Chilaki News, darling, where we talk about everything pop culture related, politics, um, what's going on in the world, everything or anything that I choose to talk about that is out there, you know, for the people, the celebrities and teams to talk about. Um, sorry about the glitches in advance. Um, in the back, you're going to hear a motor because my fan is on because it's the summertime. And yes, the air is circulating, the central air, but it's very hot in my room. I'm upstairs. Okay. All right. So, first of all, let me send an RIP to um, Nigel uh, Shelby, the 15-year-old uh, boy who um, committed uh, suicide from um, being bullied, uh, for being gay. I have no words. I can only imagine. God bless his family and, you know, just we really need to do better. Um, I was out at a particular restaurant um, with my friend that we frequent. Um, this little Asian restaurant. And um, right beside us was a whole group of people. A group of black folks. Um, I think, believe it was two girls and the rest of them was guys. It was a whole table full of them. All of them looked like big, big truck drivers, you know. But I didn't say that to them because there was, for what, you know. Anyway, me and my friend was just talking, you know, in our normal speaking voice. Very low, very monotone, very respectful. And I still, like, kept noticing or hearing comments that they was making. It's like, oh, let's make fun of the gay guys. Like, really? All of y'all are 30 plus years old and y'all are still bullies. And you wonder why your kids are in the predicament they're in? That, that's their karma because their parents ain't shit okay so I, I don't I genuinely don't understand um, bullying and, and just why what do you get out of it at the end of the day by making somebody feel this big about themselves like and I know in high school it's in school period it's just all about fitting in and all this kind of stuff and just please, just please, we just need to do better as a nation, especially as black people. There's only so far we're going to go until we're all wiped out anyway. Because, you know, most of us are, you you know, we watering down our race every single day. So, you know, ain't going to be no black people left anyway. But, just stop. Just stop. We're all, all of us have to make it and band together, all people of color. Like, stop putting... Why do we put each other in these different subgroups? I understand it was all created back during slavery. But just, my God, just please. Why, why, why? We need to do better, please, as a nation. Um, and there's nothing cute about being 30 plus years old and being a bully. Sitting and talking about somebody because of their weight. Because of their hair. Because of their skin color. Because of their sexual orientation. Because of their clothes. Because of their shoes. Because of their religion. Grow your ass up. Big football player built the ass. So rest in peace to Nigel. Um, I also want to send a rest in peace to um, director John Singleton. My God, um, he passed away from a stroke, I believe. Um, bless his heart. You know, God um, bless him and uh, his family. And um, thank you for all that you've done for us as a people. Um, I would also like to send a rest in peace. Uh, this really took me out. A rest in peace to um, the Braxton sisters' niece, um, Lauren Braxton. She passed away at age 24. That is um, one of uh, their brother's kids, Michael Braxton's uh, daughter, one of them. Says, um, my God, 24 years old, passing away. Um, says according to TMZ Lauren is the daughter of Michael Conrad Braxton Jr. Um, says that uh, she passed away she had a um, heart condition um, says Lauren was unresponsive when she arrived um, when the police arrived she was unresponsive um, and she was announced deceased by paramedics so I can only imagine God, um, please bless her soul and bless the whole Braxtons, all of them. Being 24 years old and passing away is... I have no words for it. I have no words. Being that young and passing away is, is definitely um, 
just a tragedy a tragedy very very sad um so god bless michael braxton tony braxton tracy braxton tawanda braxton trina braxton tamar braxton all their kids evelyn braxton and um michael braxton uh junior and senior oh lord have mercy jesus okay um what else is happening? Let's see. Oh, it says, um, now mind you, um, a lot of the stuff I'm reading for either, from either Twitter and Instagram. But everything else that I talk about will be in the bottom bar below. Unless I tell you otherwise. Since I'm reading this from social media, it won't be in the bottom bar below. But all my other topics I'm going to discuss will be in the bottom bar below. So just check the more info box down below. Check the, check the, uh, check, click that box. Ciao! Check that box, child, and, and see what's all in there so that y'all can watch what I'm talking about. Okay. What is this? It says Cardi B excuses R. Kelly. Excuses make R. Kelly making excuses for R. Kelly. What is this? Let's see. They're making documentaries about R. Kelly. Why are they making documentaries about Michael Jackson? Well, let me tell y'all why. Because y'all make it y'all make people feel like it's okay to do so. Why wouldn't a white Caucasian person try to capitalize on the drama that happens in the urban and the black entertainment business when black blogs, black owned blogs, capitalize on their own drama and problems? You don't see Donald Trump, you don't see Charlie Sheen's shit going viral every year, every so, because they don't give a fuck anymore. Back in the day, TMZ used to report about Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, all these Caucasian celebrities, all these celebrity actors. Now all they do is post about hip-hop artists, people that's in the black entertainment business, because black blogs capitalize on black entertainers' drama. Y'all barely post positive shit about us, so why would a white blog post positive shit about us? Why am I making that I see what Cardi's saying, but shut up. Just please. Um, the reason why black blogs post about black entertainers is because we don't give a damn about white entertainers and, and what they're doing and the tea and whoop to whoop and whatever. That's why. We're inspired by our own people we are um familiar with our own artists we are we're we're, we're black i mean don't I, I mean okay i feel like cardi b's missed her calling i feel like cardi b should be doing what i'm doing what a lot of other people are doing vlogging because she she pays attention to the vlogs the blog blo vlogs and the blogs more than any other celebrity i know Cardi B is lit, honey. She knows all the tea before I know it. But y'all know I get the tea afterwards anyway, child, because I'm working. My back hurting right now, child. I gotta go to workers' comp doctor. It's a whole mess. But, um, yeah, child. Um, Cardi B begins the tea before anybody gets the tea. Now, she's upset about the blog, about the shade room. You know, she has came for them multiple times. Many vloggers, um, big name vloggers like uh, Tasha K came for her. Um, and you know a couple of other people um, multiple times for them to stop posting about her etc some of them have obliged um, her and, and other ones have said child please this is how I eat um, Cardi's a Libra I'm a Libra we're sensitive at times um, I just really don't think that Cardi realized how blessed she are to come to come from where she came from um, and to have accomplished what she has accomplished in which most so many female rappers out there are still out there doing their thing and still out there trying to get that spot where Cardi B is now I don't think she's thankful and blessed enough um, of course there's going to be negativity of course there's going to be drama uh, that unfortunate is just life and yes it can bring you down and yes it's hard which is why a lot of artists don't pay attention to the blogs and all this other foolishness. They only speak about things when it gets to a certain level and then they speak about it. You know? But Cardi B, every single little thing that goes on. There's been multiple times um, people like the Shade Room, um, they post articles and stuff about Cardi B and it's positive. 
But she don't acknowledge that. She only talk about negatives. And she sit up here and still defend an offset. That ain't shit ass man. So it's just like girl where's your head at for real? And also Cardi B is in the news again. Because uh, she called the owner of the shade room. Which is a heavy set chocolate woman. Um, she called her water buffalo. On top of in the past calling dark skinned black women cockroaches and everything else. Do y'all think that if this woman was a black woman herself that she would continue to come for, in particular, dark-skinned black women? No. So why do black people still call this woman black? She's Trini and Dominican. Does that make her black? I got white in my blood because of slavery. Does that make me white? No, fool, clown. <coughs> I don't doubt that she has black African in her. Of course. But is she considered a black woman? Does she consider herself a black woman? The answer is no. And it's not up for discussion. I love the people. I do. But I'm just saying, please, like, and then people in the comments, other black people in the comments also coming for that lady. You know, these crazy fans, child. And they're not even seeing the big point. That's that's the reason. That this is this is the reason why us as black people are only gonna go to a certain level because we're so separated and, and you know it, it, it's ridiculous I have a friend we was discussing and talking um, you know about the whole Cardi B situation sorry about the glitches and everything and um, she was just like yeah and and uh, she's my homegirl she's darker than me and she was saying that oh I don't consider I consider Cardi to be black and all this other kind of stuff and she is a black woman and all this kind of stuff I'm sitting there as black as you is and you gonna sit up and say some foolishness like that and she's sitting out here calling your ass cockroaches and shit ooh ooh, ooh. <laughs> we are really brainwashed ain't we we all want the best for, for Belle Calise we do but she need to she need to stop and stay her ass off this just just stop um Belkalese. just please just please and please and please and please my god my god oh my what else is going on um hmm. now here's Jordan Woods and her sister That's how they do. They start the girls off early. Didn't Kylie start getting surgeries at 16? Allegedly. They say you get them early. Kim said she told her, Kai, I think that you should go out and get your surgery now. Because that way people won't have evidence of how you used to look. That's like my biggest regret. I wish. Kai, are you listening? Yeah. Okay. I wish that I would have did my surgeries earlier. <laughs> Well, she did. You know, Jordan Woods, apparently she claims that she finally know what it is to be a black woman. How black women feel every day. Oh, Lord. I, I just, this world is just, I don't know. I, girl, I, I just, ugh, girl. What else is going on? Let's see. Let's get to some of these links, child. So I can um, exit out some of this foolishness. That's why my computer is slow and I'm getting stopping and all this other stuff. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see, child. Um... Now, is it going to let me try? Have to wait a minute, child. Because it's acting slow. That's my issue. I open up all these links. Up at the same time. And I need to stop doing that, Donna. I really do. I really do need to quit, child. Uh... Is it working now? Hold on. It's coming long, child. 
Now this is supposed to be the news, y'all. We ain't supposed to have these kind of problems. What's going on? Oh, why that's loading? Let me talk about another thing. Okay, so this um year's Billboard Music Awards is um is coming. And um Kelly Clarkson is going to be the host of this year's uh, Billboard Music Awards. And um, there's this whole thing going out now about um, letting Armani perform at the BMAs. Okay, so what happened was Sam Smith. Y'all know Sam. Stay with me. Y'all know Sam. Um, apparently, there's something going on with Sam's vocal cords. And Sam had, um, he heard his vocal cords and he was going to perform his song, Dancing with a Stranger, with, um, the Normani. And so, since he's going to be out and unable to perform at the Billboard Music Awards, um, that took Normani out of the gig as well. Which is so messed up. Like, how messed up is that? You know that that girl is 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 trying, and you know she's trying to get herself out there, her music out there, and y'all is denying her of that right. That's so not right. Now I understand that she is featured on the song, um, but my God, like it's at least allow the girl to perform. Normani also has her own music out, her own song, Waves, uh, which is a good song, really cool song. And still, y'all are denying her. You know, um, that right. It's it's like y'all want to allow. It's it's like they want to allow Normani to perform unless um, there's somebody else up there with her. Like she is more than just a featured artist. Like give that girl her props. But because let's be honest, because she's a chocolate girl in the industry, um, as beautiful and as talented as she is, she's gonna have a harder time. Somebody tell me why Cardi B done popped off quick in the Cash Doll. When Cash Doll, when they pretty much come, they come from different areas, but they pretty much have similar stories and how they, you know, was brought up in strippers, etc., etc. You know, having it hard out there, rough life, whatever. Tell me why Cash Doll has not popped off like Cardi B. The Cash Doll been doing her thing way before Cardi B, way before anybody knew what a Cardi B was. Y'all tell me why. It ain't always about skin color. In certain cases, it is because if once it gets to the point where you can't explain it, it's about something. It's a, it's about it's a, it's a color thing. It's it's a gay thing. It's a weight thing. It's a thing thing. It's a something. So so what is it? It's not always about color. Okay. So um, moving on from that, one story I uh, wanted to talk about. What is going on? It says that Black China pissed Harvard grads alert school to fake ass acceptance. Okay, Black China might have flown under the radar of Harvard Uncles, Uncles, I believe, I can't say that word, if not for a flood of irate alums who put the school on notice about her apparent accepted acceptance into the online business program. TMZ broke the story. China and her team told us she soon began an online business analytics class with Harvard next month, hours after the school was posted. Um, with the acceptance letter, China provided us. Howard reached out and said she's totally full of, full of crap <laughs> in more Ivy League-ish terms, of course. A member of Harvard's Board of Alumni tells the story sent waves of range through grads we're told the online business school was already a point of contention with alumni, but the idea that China was in line to get Harvard credit was the final straw. <laughs> the board member says he got several calls demanding the school take action <laughs> by putting an end to every average Joe's admission into the online program which they feels sullies the school's legendary rep uh, reputation. 
We're told the alarm outrage spurred Harvard's investigation in China's um, eventual outing. As reported, the whole thing unearthed an insane scam. A PR firm proposing to China's team that it would complete the online course on her behalf for just a thousand dollars. Neither China nor the firm will fess up to who crafted the fake acceptance letter. Dear God in heaven, oh China, China, you are really the class clown. But these people, Miss Chill, I, what I got to do? I got to do some. I really do, cause there's no way that I can't make it in this world, and these folks is making it. There's no way. There is no. Yes, it is. Probably is a way. I'm not willing to do any and everything to get it. So that's probably why. I'm going to continue to struggle, child. But okay. So what else is going on? Um. No, I done exited out, child. Let's see. Y'all, this is the news. I don't know what the hell is going on with this door. I got too many links open. So let me just go to Facebook and click on these, child. If I can show y'all. These links will be in the bottom bar below. Okay. And I don't own the rights to any of this, by the way. In case y'all ain't noticed. Um, let's see. There's this site that um, I just recently discovered. It's because... because it's because... It's called, come on Jesus, because of the, because of them we can dot com. That's what's called. Y'all see that? Come on Jesus. Y'all see that? Because of them we can dot com. And this first story, let's get on something positive, shall. Because we got so much foolishness going on in this world. Okay. It says that father, son, and daughter graduate from Eastern Michigan University together. Uh, says we heard the family that prays together stays together. But the McGill family, the same applies to a family that graduates together. Father Pat, his son Ryan, and his daughter Reagan are walking across the stage as college graduates of Eastern Michigan University on the same day. It's an academic milestone they're proud to share as a family. It says that uh, we've always been pretty close as a family, so doing something like this is, I mean, there's not many people that can say they walked with their sibling and their parent, Ryan McGill told Fox Detroit. Pat has worked at EMU for two decades as a police officer within public safety. He has taken classes for years and will be graduating with his degree in construction management. Go on, boy. He's accomplished, he's accomplished so much. Reagan told Fox, referring to his father, seeing him over the years is so amazing to see him grow as a person. And this has just been a full and fun journey with both of them. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. What's another story of accomplishment? I think that's amazing, right? What's another good old black story of accomplishment? Let's see. Oh, a 14-year-old on the same site. A 14-year-old designed and made Big Sister's prom dress. Ain't that wonderful? Child it says his prom season arrived. Teams spend countless hours uh, scoring clothing racks and browsing websites in search of the perfect look. But for one team, the dress of her dreams didn't come from a story. It came from her little sister instead. Michaela Lewis entrusted the creation of her prom dress with her 14-year-old sister Courtney after she expressed an interest in making one for her. 
says I wanted to challenge myself and get experience in how it would feel to be a professional seamstress and go and gown designer. I thought it would be the perfect gift before she heads off to college. Courtney told because of them we can. This is a sketch. Go little girl. Ooh. Black people just so everything. That's her stunned off with the fabric. That's her making a dress for her sister. And this is the dress. Ain't that beautiful? I know that's right. Why pay more when you could pay less? I love it. What else is going on? Oh, more Braxton's news. I just don't want to tie the sad Braxton's news into this one. But more, Bra more, more Braxton's news. It says that Tracy Braxton will not tour with Tamar Braxton again. <laughs> oh, thank. They just do Tracy any kind of way. It really do piss me off, though. It's sad, low key. Um, the Braxton sisters have been trying to get back on the track since their super intense therapy session with Ayala Van Zant. In an effort to get in her sister's good graces, Tamar Braxton invited Tracy Braxton to open for her on some of her tour dates. Unfortunately, things went left out of the gate. Tamar and her management team have a problem with Tracy's manager named Cliff. Cliff wasn't allowed to accompany Tracy to the rehearsal. I already talked about this on Rastic Family Values. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I talked about this on Rastic Family Values. I don't hope hopefully I don't forget, but um I'm gonna leave a link for that in the bottom bar below as well. Um so y'all can check that out. But I already talked about that. Um and Braxton Family Value, so y'all can check that video out. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a bunch of siblings, so I don't know. Um, what else is going on? Uh Shamar Moore opens up about his losing Christophe St. John and returning to Young and the Wrestlers to honor his brother. Y'all know there was brothers on the show, Shamar. And um, Neil, that was his name on the show. After Shamar, were, after Shamar Moore returned to the Young and the Restless to honor his friend, the late Christophe St. John, um, the two men were family. St. John's tragic, sudden passing last February um, rocked more to his core. It is a loss he will never get over, but the actor is trying to keep it positive by remembering the man he called his brother. So sad. Moore is back at the CBS Daytime Soap where his career began and he met St. John to reprise the role of Malcolm Winters in a two-episode stint. Although the episodes were to say goodbye to Neil Winters, the character St. John played, Moore has admitted the cast were really uh, was really expressing their fond farewell to a man they all dearly loved. Here's a video. Hey, to my homies, to my fans, to my baby girls. It's your boy. It's your baby boy, Shamar Moore. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been showing so much love to the Young and Restless tribute for my for my boy, my mentor, my brother, Mr. Christoph St. John, who passed away. May he rest in peace. I danced with him for 10 years, and we've been brothers and so close for 20. Um, so it's sad to say goodbye, but we have to celebrate all that is good in his heart. His heart was huge for so many of us. And so I want to read to you one of the most recent and last texts that I got from him. What I always did is I always thanked him through my career, because without you, okay. I honestly wouldn't be in this business. Okay. You guys can watch that at your own time. Um, oh. So sad. So, 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 so sad. What else is going on? And more ratchet news. Um, let me see. Meghan Markle reportedly showing Kate Middleton support amid Prince William cheating. Are they cheating over there in the um, castles? Child, don't men cheat everywhere, child. Don't they cheat everywhere? I tell you. Um,. Prince William cheated on Kate Middleton with one of her friends. Dear God. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. A new insider report claims her sister-in-law, Meghan Markle, is focusing on bonding with her while showing support 
This comes after speculations that the two duchesses have not been getting along at all. Because she had black. Allegedly. While Meghan is getting ready to welcome her first baby with her husband Prince Harry, it sounds like she still finds the time to help Kate through her alleged relationship problems by just being there for her. That's all she can do. But Kate don't like her. And she's sitting there just trying to get in good. Just being the good old nigger in the castle. Child. After over the past few months, there's been quite a few headlines claiming Megan and Kate were not even close to being each other's fans. Supposedly, supposedly the differences started soon after she joined the royal family, of course. And they just didn't manage to become friendly. They don't like black people. However, it sounds like Megan has decided to look past their rough start and be there for her sister-in-law when she need her the most. The rumors of Megan and Kate not getting along are just chatter for Megan. She has always got along with everybody and she is the kind of girl everyone wants to be around. Yeah, right. And whoop to whoop. So, ugh. keep kissing ass, um, Megan. Okay, what else is going on? Um, and, yeah, they're not saying more ratchet news. What did it say? Um, Jano Doak exposing for sending nudes, photos to women and, and taking thousands from Mama June. This Mama June, man. Good old redneck love. Um, as from not to hot gets deeper into the season, more of um, Gino naughty antics are being exposed. In the latest episode, Mama June finds messages of her boyfriend sexting with fans of the show. <laughs> Ow. June Shannon calls her daughter Pumpkin in the middle of the night in tears because of the inappropriate messages she found in Gino's phone. While venting, the reality star also revealed that he took thousands of dollars from her. June noticed that lately Gino hasn't been himself. He isn't as affectionate and he barely wants to spend time with her. Meanwhile, Pumpkin takes things into her own hands and consults her psychic about her mom and bad news boyfriend. Um, to no one's surprise, the future teller thinks he's no good, child. Says, I meet, see a man controlling somebody. He's literally taking things. She had tunnel vision for Gino. There has been other people Gino should get out. He's disruptive. He's going to ruin everything. The psychic tells the worried pumpkin child. God, Lord. Y'all watch Mama June from Not to Hot. I watch it sometimes. Dear God in heaven. Get on to some housewives news. Oh, my girl Shamari has been devoted. Shamari is not going to be a housewife no more. She's going to be a friend. But they say that they're trying to bring Phaedra back to the show, child. We don't talk about that. Uh huh. And Candy's pissed about it, child. Candy, shut up. Bravo has been real good to you. And it's not like you need the show anyway. You have so many things going on, you have so many different checks coming on. Um, shut up. Phaedra needs this job. She ain't got nothing to do. Fans are delighted to find out that Phaedra Parks is in talks with John Real Housewives of Atlanta, much to Candy Bird's dismay. The singer has expressed her disdain for her frenemy in the past, which makes it easy to believe the latest report that Candy is allegedly furious. So what? Candy and Phaedra were the two peas in the pod until the attorney felt betrayed by the mother of two and her husband, Todd Tucker. <coughs> Phaedra felt that they took Apollo Knight aside, blah, blah, blah. Um... Not they um on Phaedra's side, this whole article. Okay, blah 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 blah. Okay, it's it's alleged. It's alleged, child. Um Candy's just mad. And you know, Nene have another friend, so I guess the trio uh, that everybody going to be coming against is Nene, Marlo, and Phaedra if Phaedra comes back. And I just feel like if they bring Phaedra back, they need to bring Kenya back too. That's only fair. Because Kenya didn't do anything that was nearly as bad as what Phaedra did. But personally, I like Phaedra and I want Phaedra to come back. But I just feel like if Phaedra comes back, bring Kenya back too. Let her be a friend of the show or something. Because Kenya did nothing to not be on the Housewives except for not let them show her wedding. That's their lady business. 
Okay, what else is going on? Even Marcel accuses Marlo Hampton of gay bashing. Um, Marlo Hampton's feud with Shamar DeVoe has been in front and center for quite some time now. However, her feud with Eva is also picking up. Eva fell out one of her bridesmaids. That was a long time friend. While Marcel claims that she's not cool with only one of the people that were in her wedding party, Hampton claims that she had multiple bridesmaids come to her with the gossip about Eva. Child, what they say? I don't understand her problem with people that prefer the same sex or their bisexuality. That's what Eva's saying. If that is my reality or not, what does it matter? I don't know if she would like to dip into more lady pun hunts. And if that's what she's so inquisitive about, this whole idea of her bringing this up never dipped it in the bud with her. But her gay bashing is disgusting. It is quite gross. Marlo has been gay bashing for a while. Remember she talked about Sheree, um, told her to stop hanging with them faggots um, over there in Africa and things. Um, and she was, and Miss Lawrence got her to get on together. And, you know, like I said, we are pre-programmed, especially us as black people, to be homophobic. We just automatically know there's something that's just not going to be accepted. That's just something that's just not cool to be. Um, we just know that. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. If, if Marlo's really homophobic, I don't know. But I do know that's just in us a, as a people to just naturally be that way. Um, that's why so many of us are still in the closet, etc., etc. Um, so, you know, Marlo, get it together. And, and Eva, get it together. But I just think Marlo is the kind of person that will come at you about anything. She'll find any little slight thing that she can find to talk about, she will. So I don't think it's more so just about the whole bisexuality thing or the lesbian thing. I just think that's just Marlo just being Marlo, you know. Will she ever have a peach? I don't know. We'll see. I won't be mad if Marlo get a peach, to be honest. Um, as much as I don't like her sometimes, she is good for the show. Hey, what else is going on? I think that's my last story, y'all. More Housewives lose. Even Marcel's breaks down into tears while recalling Kevin McCall's abuse and he's arrested for another domestic violence incident. I'm glad this crazy bastard in jail or trying to go to jail, about to go to jail or something. Allegedly. Very attractive man though. The craziest cat shit, ain't he? Most of them who are attractive are crazy. Um... Eva, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it says Eva has been honest and open about why uh, she doesn't want her daughter to see her father, Kevin McCall, without the proper conditions set in place. Um, through the courts. Good old court system. Um... One of the reasons being that he was very abusive towards her in their relationship. The songwriter hasn't been stable mentally and financially for quite some time. It is. It was certain recently revealed that he has been arrested for a domestic violence incident with another woman. That's Eva talking about it. It's a video. It was, um talking about because it, it took me a lot of uh, time to even get up the courage to be able to talk about it because it's embarrassing you know coming from where I come from and being as astute and as uh, courageous as I am you always feel like uh, it could never be me like you know right. and so it's one of those things where I dated Kevin and I got pregnant and we weren't really like in love to be completely honest and it wasn't a relationship that lasted long enough for me to really even know him and so it didn't start for me until I I was pregnant with Marley when wow. I was wow. and I was pregnant with my child. So mm. that's when the abuse started. Yep. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Um. Well, I'm glad that um, Eva has you know got out of that situation, and I wish her the best. She seems happy now. Um. And yeah, there you go. Anything else to talk about, y'all? I think that's everything. Oh, um. Yeah, that's it. That's all I want to talk about, y'all. And I wanted to end with this. Um, Wanye, Wanye Norris, I believe this is his last name, 
from boys to men. He has four sons. They're a little singing group. They are adorable and they can sing their tail off. Y'all know boys to men is the best vocal group of all time. So here's a little clip of his son singing. I don't own the rights to this. Come on, Harmony. Adorable. Adorable. <laughs> I love it. Um, was that it, y'all? I think that was it, child. If it ain't, then hell. Just look in the bottom bar below and, and y'all will find it, child. Um, with that said, I'm Mr. Chalak. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Mr. Chalak on Google Plus. Follow me at this kids on Instagram and Twitter. At this kids 89 on Snapchat. Chisk me on Facebook. Mr. Chalak on Cash App and PayPal. All my social media moments will be in the bottom bar below. Run me my money, I'll run me my fade. Run me my money the way I get paid. I forgot. That was that pause, y'all. Love you guys so much. See you guys later.